So I started with this elephant fountain, but I wanted to replace the elephants with dragons. So I cut off the two elephants, and now I need to fill this hole. Uh, using a piece of chicken wire, I come through and cut it into a more manageable shape, and then hot glue that underneath, and that'll serve as a nice base that we can then put plaster over the top of. This is quite fiddly, but we just need to make sure that the chicken wire is nice and flat and underneath where we want our final plaster to go. I wanted to make sure none of the sculpture mold fell out down to the bottom so I just put on some baking paper and came through and ripped that off later on. Now when I cut this off I used a grinder so there's a lot of dust uh, particles all over this so I just want to clean those up before we go sticking anything on. Then I mixed up my own sculptor mold using a very watered down plaster of Paris with some toilet tissue ripped up and put in there for that tensile strength. And this is the same technique I used on my first diorama video. And with that well mixed to the consistency of cottage cheese, I just layer it on and cover that hole. The great thing about working from an already pre-built fountain is that I can just modify it to fit how I want it to look. And a lot of the detailing work is already done for me and all of the water and electronics are well managed and work perfectly straight out of the box. And with the sculptor mold still a little bit wet, I press the feet of the dragon to leave an indent on the ground. I then mask this clear piece at the top so that doesn't get hit by any black primer. Making sure to cut it flush around the edges so that way even in the little cracks we get some primer and can paint down in there. And I use the back of a paintbrush just to make sure that it's nice and flat. And with it primed black, I just come through with a light grey and completely cover the entire model. And then once that base layer is dry, I use a black brown wash and soak every crevice. To restore some highlights, I just dry brush over with that same base color again. I wanted to add some color variation where the pools of water would gather, so I just painted a blue and green to make it look like an algae or something that would grow along the bottom of a pond. While it doesn't look super realistic, it adds some nice color variation. As well as the dragon, I wanted to add a little incense cone burner. This is a plate of crystals I 3D printed off and I'm going to add a magnet to the top and a metal sheet to the bottom of the plate. That way it can easily be removed and cleaned when the incense runs out. Flocking makes everything look better, 
So I used PVA glue and put it everywhere where it wouldn't get wet, where things are able to grow. And I'll cover that in dirt and then grass. Bit more sparingly place the grass around the center areas and use watered down PVA glue to get into the cracks of the dirt. You want to make sure they can see both the dirt underneath and the grass on top. Then carefully remove all of that masking tape. With everything in place, I then spray over a little methylated spirits and drop in some watered down PVA glue. This, as well as a layer of matte varnish at the end, will completely hold in everything and stop the water from displacing any of the pieces. After painting the dragon, I put a paper clip into his foot and super glued him down onto the base. If you want to find the 3D model for this dragon, it'll be in the description below. You could use stronger glues, but super glue is able to easily hold it down as long as you just make sure that connection is nice and tight and has as much space as you can afford it. To add a bit more grandeur and scale to the size of this dragon, I get some of my smaller scale trees and place them along the ridge side next to him. And with these, I'm using super glue again just to bond them onto the ground. And with everything properly bonded, it's time to go outside, give it a spray of matte varnish, and it's ready for Christmas. My mother has wanted a purple dragon pondering on a fountain orb for a very long time, and I propose to you, if a wizard can ponder his orb, why can't a dragon? Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to see more. I'll see you next time.